So we are officially four weeks to the day away from one of my favorite days of the entire year. The NFL Draft, uh, April 29th, is rapidly approaching. So I wanted to kind of look at some some names that are flying under the radar or names that I think that could really help the Cowboys out, um, you know, outside of just the corner position, right? We obviously know that that's a position of need for them and a position in which I think is most likely, as of today, uh, the, the outcome there with the 10th overall pick. We talked about Patrick Sertan and uh, J.C. Horn. Uh, but, but again, so I wanted to look at some of these other names that, uh, for whatever reason, aren't being talked about and that, that I am just kind of really intrigued by as, as far as how they profile athletically and what I think they could potentially bring. The first of which is uh, Carlos Boogie Basham. He goes by Boogie. He's six foot three, 275 pound edge out of Wake Forest University. Uh, and this is a guy who I just, I really love for his versatility. I think, you know, for the same reasons why I think corner is so important to build around now, just with, with, quarterbacks and their mobility neutralizing the pass rush a lot more than we've ever seen. Uh, I think it's kind of a, the same thing here with, with Boogie, right? He's obviously not a corner, but um, he's a guy that offers position versatility. I think if the more, the more you bring uh, as far as traits are concerned or the fewer weaknesses you have, the better off you're going to be and the better chance you're going to have at making an impact on an NFL roster. He possesses these kind of, these rare, a rare combination of traits that is his power, his speed, but also his hip fluidity. I look at that a lot when just kind of like grading athletes, I guess. Uh, I'm not an expert in that regard at all, but that's one of the first things that stands out to me when I'm watching a guy move. It's just the way he can kind of flip his hips, change direction, uh, but also pursue kind of laterally, at, you know, as a, as a, as a tackler. Um, the angles at which he can run, you know, like, is he a straight line only guy? Can he move laterally? How, how do his hips work? And this is a guy that does all of that really, really well. Uh, and you'll see here this, uh, this, this athletic profile, something that I've been paying a lot of attention to this season from a guy, his name is Kent Lee Platt, who basically came up with this, he's a math guy, right? He came up with this RAS score, this relative athletic score, and he kind of just grades players from every position based on their peers, right? From dating all the way back to 1987. You look at this metric, Kent says he scored a 9.54 relative athletic score out of a possible 10. Since 1987, only 62 guys out of 1,354 have graded higher athletically. So if you think about that, you do the math, that's 34 years, right? That means that each of the last draft classes for the last 34 years, he is one of the top two best overall defensive line athletes in every single draft dating back to 1987. I was having conversations with uh, guys like Brandon Beyer and even Jeff Cavanaugh uh, the day before uh, this guy, Kent Lee Platt, posted the RAS score for Carlos Basham, just talking about how much of a gifted athlete I thought he was. And, and then this metric pops out that, you know, comes out the day later and it really just kind of verifies that. So that was cool to see. And, and you know, I asked Jeff if I talked about the versatility, right? This is what I mean by that and why I think it's important is I think, so if you identify his strong suit, like his best positional fit as a 4-3 strong side edge, can he move inside on obvious passing down situations and offer, you know, provide some pass rush uh, from the interior? So the, the Cowboys don't have a ton of, you know, proven commodities there at that position. It's obviously a position of need. And so if you can identify a guy like Carlos Basham, who can provide you some of that, you know, that hybrid style defensive line play, uh, you know, maybe not only does it allow you to get creative from a roster construction standpoint, you know, you got to, you, know, you got to cut your roster down. Uh, maybe you can get creative there as a, as a general manager. Uh, but but then again, it allows you to get creative too as a defensive coordinator. And again, just another tool uh, in the shed for Dan Quinn to try to utilize. Well, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that he has this sort of strength and just overall stability to kind of anchor the interior of your defensive line and consistently battle double teams and eat blocks, right? I don't think that's the case here. I think he does profile best as an edge, but... To me, he's a guy that plays with enough power and enough burst, kind of like that explosive burst with his first step, 
to provide some of that interior pressure. Again, like I said, on long, on obvious passing down situations. And I think any quarterback will tell you that the best pressure, or the at least in, in their in their from their perspective, the the worst pressure is pressure that comes from the interior. It just makes things more difficult as a quarterback. So if you can get a guy that can bring some of that, some of those traits, uh, and just see what he can develop into as uh, you know, just an overall player, just continue to like refine some of the technique, right? He's obviously got great hands. Um, and, and, you know, he actually plays with pretty great length as well. He's got an 80 inch wingspan that if you've got more tools, right, it's just more ways that Dan Quinn could sort of use you uh, within his defense. And so, you know, you look at some of the numbers, like they kind of speak for themselves, right? He's averaging almost a sack per game in the last two years. Uh, and I think that this is a guy that more people would know a lot more about had he just had a little bit more of that national exposure. You know, again, playing at Wake Forest and the ACC, really their only high-profile matchup was uh, was Clemson this year. So no, it didn't really get to showcase a ton of that, and their season was already shortened. So in six games, he had five sacks, uh, one forced fumble, and a pass deflection. In 13 games he played last year, he had 11 sacks, three forced fumbles, and three pass deflections. So... Uh, but the stat that really stood, stood out the most to me is that he had 19 straight games with a tackle for loss. And that's why I get so excited. What, what does that stat tell me? Well, basically, it just means that he is consistently getting up the field and splitting, splitting gaps and just causing, causing havoc in the backfield. You know, you just see some of the metrics that he tested at his pro day. Uh, a 46440 which is right up there with a lot of running backs in today's NFL people think that you know if you don't run a 44 you're not fast it's just simply not true um, but you know I think he he cut down a little bit from what he weighed at the senior bowl at, at over 280 so he, he ran at 275 probably likely trying to shed some of that weight so he could test a little bit better uh, in the 40 time 20 20 reps on the bench which when you compare him to a guy like Aaron Donald, who I'm obviously not, I'm not saying that's who Carlos is. I'm just trying to give you an idea of his athletic profile and where he tests and what I think he is capable of in certain instances, right? But Aaron Donald bench pressed 225 pounds 35 times. That's just other world superhuman strength. And he's obviously a little bit shorter, so the bar doesn't have to travel as far as, you know, a 6'3 guy like Carlos Basham. Uh, but still, um, you know, I think maybe him losing, shedding that weight for the 40, Maybe cost him a few reps here and there uh, on uh, on the bench press, but uh, I'm not really overly too concerned with that. Again, like I said, I'm not. You're not going to ask him to, you know, line up at the nose spot and just basically eat double team. Like that's not the role here. I'm just saying on third downs, I think he he offers you something that very few guys do with their combination of power and speed. It's just kind of rare. So if we just look at his his size and his speed alone, and then take a look back uh, since the year 2000, only six defensive linemen at the NFL Scouting Combine have weighed more than 270 pounds and ran under a 4.7 in the 40. And that list includes Aaron Donald, Mario Williams, Justin Houston, Everson Griffin, Will Smith, and Miles Garrett. So, you know, pretty elite company right there. And I believe five out of those six are first round picks. So... That's, that's the kind of athlete we're talking about here, guys. Like he already, so at 275, let's just say he only plays the edge position. The two starting edges for the Dallas Cowboys are Randy Gregory, who's 250 pounds, and Demarcus Lawrence, who's I think about 265. So you're already seeing like he's heavier than those two guys, but he's also just as athletic and explosive. And then, you know, you just look at his broad jump. That's, that's usually a pretty good indicator of overall just explosiveness and athleticism. Uh, Byron Jones, right, obviously has the, the all-time NFL record with a 12-foot broad. Uh, but then, you know, you get a guy who is, again, 275 pounds, jumping 10-foot two. That kind of speaks for itself. You compare that to Aaron Donald, who, as strong and explosive as that dude is, he had a 9-5 broad. I think just in sub-packages, this guy could be a nightmare if he, if he develops and refines some of that technique. Again, under the, under the guidance of Dan Quinn, uh, I'm excited to see what he could bring, and I think that when you look at, you know, just you know, Dab Dabo Sweeney called this guy the best edge we'll see all year before his matchup with Clemson. 
So I think that just kind of tells you, you know, people people see him, they understand on film. They're like, they know this guy's going to be a problem. Uh, and so I just want to see maybe the Cowboys, they like him, identify him as a as a potential guy that can help them on on the defensive side of the ball, you know, an area that's plagued them, obviously. And, and you know, again, like I said, this such a t- it's a, such a tough impact position. Like we've only seen, I think, five or six defensive tackles ever uh, uh, in the National Football League make make it to the Hall of Fame. It's just because it's a it's a non glamorous position. It's a position that you're asked to just kind of do some of that dirty work up there. Uh, if the Cowboys are afforded the opportunity, maybe trade down out of that 10th pick, add an extra day two pick in the process as a result of that trade down, uh, I think this is a guy that they would sprint to turn his card in, right? So just uh, hope that we have that possibility uh, present itself. And I'm looking forward to, regardless of where he ends up on draft day, uh, seeing how the, uh, the career of Carlos Basham plays out.